After a very long hiatus, it looks like we might finally have some new Tesla FSD beta release notes, and they're all about video and latency. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I want to start off by saying that this is not official yet. I looked on Not A Tesla app. They don't have official release notes yet, but they do have FSD beta 11.4.8 unconfirmed release notes and the credit to where it's due on Reddit. So at this point, of course, take these release notes with a little bit of a grain of salt, but they do have the air of authenticity. They seem to be correct in terms of the style and what they're talking about. And if they're true, they actually reveal quite a bit of stuff that's going on under the hood. And 11.4.8 is going to be a much bigger release than the 11.4.72.8 release number would indicate. All right, so I know this isn't the most beautiful background or anything like that, but this is what I got at this point. So anyway, it's all off the cuff. I actually had a whole other video that I was in the middle of editing when this came out. So this took precedence. Obviously, you'll get that one in the next day or two. So anyway, here we go. First one, this one's not very technical at all. I think everyone can understand this one. Added an option to activate autopilot with a single stock depression instead of two to help simplify activation and disengagement. And so that's like that double double tap on the right hand stock, or I assume, you know, I think it's only one press on the steering wheels that only have the, the, the pressure button and things. I, I don't know because I haven't driven full self-driving in one of those with the yoke. But anyway, at least for those of us with the stocks, it looks like this will make it just so you push down once and you get all of full self-driving rather than having to push it twice. The first one is traffic aware cruise control. And then the second one is full self-driving. So that will be optional for people who don't want to use it that way. They don't have to, but I think for me, I'll definitely set it to be that way. Assuming again, this is all real, but that will be very, very convenient because you just press down once and it will go into full self-driving. And this is where we get to the video module, which is kind of the, the centerpiece of what looks like this update. Introduced a new efficient video module to the vehicle detection, semantics, velocity, and attributes network that allowed for increased performance at lower latency. This was achieved by creating a multi-layered hierarchical video module that caches intermediate computations to dramatically reduce the amount of compute that happens at any particular time. So yeah, this is quite a bit of stuff to unpack here. So new video module, that doesn't mean like a camera or something. What that means is a new part of their neural network stack. And interestingly enough, we've been talking about end-to-end -end networks and stuff like that. And whether it's one gigantic network or a bunch of them strung together, I think this actually starts to help answer that question. And that is that it will be a string of these neural networks. So rather than one just behemoth kind of neural network that just takes in photons and outputs control, we're looking at, you know, taking in things and there's modules in between makes way more sense because you can freeze parts of the neural network and only train specific parts. So anyway, it would be the logical thing to do. It's still end to end. It's just not end to end in one giant structure. It's like end to end in little pieces. Anyway, this looks like it's all about efficiency. Like they, they talk about lower latency. They talk about efficient video module. So what it's doing is it's de detecting the outside world. It's then semantically figuring out what that is. So I don't know, <laughs> coffee mug or something like that, right? It's, it's like, I don't think it would detect a coffee mug. Maybe Optimus someday will. But you know, a car versus a bicycle versus a human versus a curb versus a tree versus a sidewalk, all of that kind of stuff. That's semantics. And then it figures out for objects that are moving their velocity and their attributes, whether it's a person and if there's kinematics, and we'll see some more about that later. So anyway, you get increased performance because it's doing this. It's more efficient and it has lower latency and it's producing better results. So you're getting better results faster. And that's really crucial for Tesla at this stage of the game. And again, how they achieved this is a multi-layered. So again, it's multiple layers. It's not just one giant thing. Hierarchical video module. I assume that means it's taking things in and then it's kind of breaking them apart as it needs to or something internally. I'm not exactly sure what the hierarchical means in that case, or it's just hierarchical in, sen in the sense of like it takes photons in, it detects whether the space is occupied, semantically figures it out, figures out the attributes, maybe, maybe it's hierarchical in that sort of sense instead. And then very importantly, you can see that it says it caches the intermediate computations. And what that means is what it's doing is it's reducing the amount of compute that's needed at any time. Instead of having to do all of the calculations in a waterfall from the beginning to the end of the whole thing, if it knows that certain elements are staying the same, I guess what it can do is freeze those, it can cache those into memory, and then only do the calculations it needs to do around that. 
So that will dramatically improve the speed if it doesn't have to do all the calculations all the time. If it can cleverly figure out which calculations to do and freeze other things, that will make it go way, way faster and be much more efficient. And then we get back to something that we've seen in earlier release notes, which is improving distant crossing object detections by an additional 6% and improve the precision of vehicle detection by refreshing old data sets with better auto labeling and introducing the new video module. So distant objects would be things like cars, lights, whatever, just stuff that's far away. So it's very difficult for the vehicle to see that. We, you know, our human eyes are kind of analog and we just see things far away and they're just there. And so we don't have to deal with it. But in a digital world, there's a space beyond which you can't see. And there's ways of adjusting the, 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 the size of voxels in space and all of this kind of stuff that you have to do in order to adjust for that. And distant objects are particularly difficult for these neural networks to deal with. So improving distant object detection and knowing that something is there well ahead of time so that you don't have to do emergency braking or something as you come up upon it, that will be a very big advantage. So every percent improvement in that is a really big improvement. And just as interestingly, they talk about the precision of vehicle detection. Precision is about false positives. So that means seeing things in the distance that aren't actually there. So it actually is good in that sense too. So the car will continue to drive rather than going like, oh my gosh, I think there's something there and then braking. And you're like, why did the car just brake? And it was just because it saw a phantom or something like that. So improving that will mean you'll, you'll reduce the amount of phantom braking, which will be a big help. And then how they did it, they took their older data sets, they took the ones that they had, and they put new stuff in there, new auto-labeled data to make this all train better and maybe remove some of the stuff that wasn't working as well. And of course, they introduced the new video module that we just talked about into this training process. Next up, we have improved the precision of cut-in vehicle detection by 15% with additional data and the changes to the video architecture that improve performance and latency. So again, precision is all about false positives, improving that means that you're not going to have the car phantom brake when a car is not actually cutting into your lane. Maybe that maybe your car, the ego car, thinks that they're about to cut in, and so it will brake, and you'll be like, why did it brake? That car was clearly not cutting in, you know, whatever. Or it was cutting out, and it was moving out of the way, so you didn't need to brake. So anyway, that should make that, that braking scenario go a lot better. It should be much, much smoother. And of course, they did this with more data and with the video module and that architecture. And you notice that, again, they talk about latency. They're like, this is better. It's better performance and it's lower latency. So it takes less time to do it. So you see a repetition of the same thing happening over and over again in these notes. Next up, we have reduced vehicle velocity error by 3% and reduced vehicle acceleration error by 10% by improving auto labeled data sets, introducing the new video module and aligning model training and inference more closely. So it doesn't specify here the vehicle velocity and the vehicle acceleration, whether they're talking about your car, the ego car, or other cars. I think it indicates that we're talking about other cars, but I could be wrong about that. But anyway, the way that they've done that is they've improved the auto-labeled data sets. In other words, the labeling of other vehicles, how fast they're traveling, where they are, how fast they're accelerating, all of that kind of stuff. And of course, introducing the new video module. So <laughs> the common theme of these notes is all about the new video module. And interestingly, enough, aligning the model training and inference more closely. In other words, the inference being the thing that's calculated as you're actually driving with the training process. I don't know if that means that they're actually, you know, verifying what they've got in their training with actual inference data or whether they're doing something else, but whatever that is, they're doing an alignment of the training and inference process to make sure this is even more efficient. Next up, reduce the latency of the vehicle semantics network by 15% with the new video module architecture, geez, where have we heard that before, at no cost to performance. So basically they've reduced the latency, They've the semantics specifically, which is identifying what everything is. Is it a car? Is it a tree? Is it a person? Is it a dog? All of that stuff. They've reduced the latency. So they've increased the speed by 15% at no cost to performance by using this new video module. So this new video module is all the hotness apparently. Next up, they've reduced the error of pedestrian and bicycle rotation. I'm not sure what that means exactly. We'll get back to that in a second. By over 8% by leveraging object kinematics more extensively when jointly optimizing pedestrian and bicycle tracks in 
and auto label data sets. So I think rotation means that the, the cycling of thinking it's a pedestrian versus a cyclist. I think that's what it means. But basically what they're doing is instead of training for pedestrians and cyclists separately, it sounds like they're training them both together with using auto label data sets that have pedestrians and cyclists. And maybe pedestrians who become cyclists, like somebody who's standing next to a bike and then they get on the bike and they start to ride away or something. So there's a, like a transition from them being a pedestrian to a cyclist, or maybe it's just a cyclist who's right next to a pedestrian and they're training that together. Whatever it is, they've reduced the error by 8% by training it together rather than separately. So that's a, a very good thing, of course. Next up, we have improved geometric accuracy of Vision Park Assist predictions by 16% by leveraging 10 times more hardware for data, interesting, tripling resolution and increasing overall stability of measurements. So I don't know about you, but I can never get Vision Park Assist to actually work. So <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be really cool to test this out if I could ever get it to work. But whatever it is, they've improved the predictions by 16% in terms of accuracy, in terms of getting into a parking space. It basically does parallel parking for you. But anyway, what they've done is they've leveraged 10 times more hardware for data and the cameras in hardware four are, are much higher resolution than the hardware three ones. So they're able to utilize that tripled resolution right there to create a more stable simulation and to understand the the you know, environment that the car is in much better and allow it to park more accurately than it had before. So if we can ever get Park Assist to actually work, what did Elon call it? Actually Smart Summon or actually Smart Park or something like that. But anyway, hopefully that will actually start to work and be a useful thing. I would love it if it would park for me. That would be great. And finally, I'll move myself out of the way here. Improved path blockage lane change accuracy by 10% due to updates to static object detection networks. So accuracy is precision and recall. It's fewer false positives and fewer false negatives. Path blockage would be like you're driving along and there's a, a, a mail truck, right? It's like delivering mail or something and it's stopped on the side of the road. The decision you have to make as a human driver and of course full self-driving also has to make is, do I go around them or do I wait for the person to move on? And so obviously they've improved the accuracy of that decision by 10%. So it's not improving the driving at all. It's more the like you pull up behind this and it's like, do I go around or do I stay behind them? That's improved by 10%, which is actually a pretty reasonable number. I found in the past that the car tends to be too conservative. So hopefully it will be a little more aggressive about going around stopped vehicles going forward. All right, so again, this is unconfirmed, but this is what we think is FSD beta 11.4.8's release notes. And again, it rings kind of true. It sounds like what Tesla engineers usually put out there. If it is true, it sounds like it's all about this video module. It's all about how this thing is going to improve latency. It's going to improve performance, how these new data sets that they've got and auto labeling that's being done by the computer as well is helping to improve all of this. And so you can see at this point in the process, Tesla is all about improving performance while also simultaneously reducing latency. So they're getting into, again, the late stage aspects of this. And this is clearly another step towards version 12. It looks like if this does come out, if 11.4.8 does come out, this is another, it's not just a tiny dot dot release here. It's another major step towards getting towards version 12 of the software. And that would make sense that Tesla would actually work on this. It would be something that they would release because it's a stepping stone along the path to get to version 12. It's not just a side quest that doesn't really matter. So again, just to be clear, this is unconfirmed. This is speculation at this point, but if this is true, it's all about the video module and it's all about adding more stuff to that end-to-end -end network that will be version 12 of full self-driving. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it fun and interesting and thought-provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. That would be very nice. And also consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. 60% of people don't subscribe, so please don't be one of those 60, be one of the 40. As always, a huge shout out to my Patreon patrons, my YouTube channel members, and of course my ex-subscribers. Thank you all so much for helping out the channel in any way that you can. And if you want to join any of the teams, just check out the links in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Tesla bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, don't forget that we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a Tesla, a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.